Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our UBC Biomedical Visualization and Communication Information Session. We have, as always, a lot to cover today, and in a moment I'll make our introductions, I'll give a brief overview of the program and some tips on how, we, um, how you can participate in today's sessions, because we do want to hear from you. I will then pass over to Dr. Krebs, who will speak to the curriculum, followed by Bailey Lowe, who will speak to career considerations for prospective students, as well as showcasing some super portfolios from our 2021 students, and followed by uh, Q and A. Um, we have turned chat feature off as per usual. We are using a, a platform called Slido. You'll see a QR. You could take a photograph of that right now with your phone. It will bring you directly into our Q and A session where you can start posting posting questions. But also, we do have a couple of questions for you in our polls, and we'd love to hear from you. If that does not work for you and you're working with a laptop, you can open a new tab in your browser and type slido.com and enter our event code today, which is BMVC05. So again, photograph of the QR code will bring you directly in, or if uh, you're opening a new tab in your browser, it's slido.com, and our event code today is BMVC05. Um, we have muted you, you can elect to turn on or off your video, and then as always, we are recording today's lecture for anyone who's unable to join us or has to leave early. My name is Aideen Cleary, I'm coordinator with UBC Extended Learning, and I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Claudia Krebs. Dr. Krebs has been teaching neuroanatomy and gross anatomy to MD undergraduates, biomedical engineering students, and allied health prof professions at UBC for more than a decade. And in 2017, she created Hackspace for Innovation and Visualization in Education, or lovingly known as The Hive. Also joining us today is Bailey Lowe. Bailey has been instructing UBC students since 2018 and currently works as a program coordinator on this program. This, uh, these bios are brief for, um, for the sake of time and I encourage you to check our website for a full bio of our presenters today or read our handbook. Now for those highlights. This program is a collaboration between UBC Faculty of Medicine, The Hive, and the Center for Digital Media, which is a unique partnership of four leading BC academic institutions and leaders from the digital media industry and UBC Extended Learning. It's 100% online, so beyond two two hour synchronized classes and an optional team meeting each week, the program offers flexibility for students to incorporate this program schedule into your professional and personal schedules. And we do have a glance at that schedule, how it looks uh, in, a few, in, a, in a later slide. Our instructors, well, our instructors are a team of specialists, highly respected in their particular community. All hold master's degree or, hires, uh, or higher and are experienced in adult education. Once again, full bios are on our website. I encourage you to, to read them. This program has a unique focus on diversity and inclusivity in biomedical communication, which Dr. Krebs will explain during her presentation, as well as describing the immense value of peer-to-peer -peer learning and collaboration that students in this program will witness as they study alongside individuals with different professional qualifications and backgrounds. And of note, this program is open to all nationalities, regardless of residency or citizenship status in Canada. Now for the program format. Well, as I mentioned, it is 100% online, instructor supported with real-time classes, workshops, labs, and project working sessions. It spans over a year, January to December, 2023, with three terms. And those terms are broken up into three 12-week courses, plus a 12 week final project. So you'll see there term one is January to April, whereas two courses, the foundations and managing creativity, term two has human structure, runs, concludes in July, and term three starts in September, concludes early December with the final group project. In both terms one and two, an expected minimum of 10 to 15 hours per week to complete all online learning requirements using Canvas, which is UBC's online learning platform. 
Students participate in asynchronous coursework, synchronous class discussions, they have exercise, quizzes, readings and assignments. Now that schedule, just to give you a sense of what it is and potentially um, visualize this, uh, this in your own personal and professional schedule, basically term one and term two are very, very similar. So on a Sunday, if you haven't already, you should be considering submitting your homework for last week's Managing Creativity class and ensure that you have all your pre-readings and exercises um, completed and ready for the next day live session. So Monday is your live session. Tuesday, once again, if you have not already submitted, be sure to submit your homework for last week's foundations class and make sure you've completed the readings and pre-class exercises for the following day's live session. Wednesday, you're attending the live session for foundations and biomedical visualization class. On Friday, there's an optional group critique technical workshop. As I said, um, term two is very similar with the course, the anatomy course, and term three, which is a capstone project. So um, on Sunday, you're starting to consider meeting, making meetings, uh, making plans to meet your team for during the week and your client. And on Wednesday, you have an actual uh, virtual workshop followed by, uh, once again, the op op optional group critique or technical workshop on Friday. Who is this program for? Well, we have seen and we, we witnessed that learners emerge from two core professional or educational backgrounds. That's the biomedical and health professionals, plus the media design and programming professionals. So you can consider this program and I won't go through the list, but I would say if you don't see yourself in this list of biomedical professionals, health educators, graphic designers, researchers, scientists, etc. Um, we encourage you to contact us for a one on one meeting with our coordinator to discuss your background, your skills, your professional education background and to see if this program would meet your expectations and if it's a good fit for you. So this is a question that we have for you. And again, um, we are using Slido today. We have a couple of poll questions. We'd love you to participate in our polls. One of our first questions is, we'd love to know when do you plan to take the program, to participate, take a photograph of the QR code here on the left, it'll bring you right in, or um, new browser type slido.com and the event code is BMVC05. So thank you, I can see you're all popping in now. I'll just give that a moment before I move on to the next question. Okay, I'll move on to the next question. Thank you for that. What field of work are you in now? I see B shaking her head. Yeah, she recognizes those backgrounds and that's great. Thank you for that. I'll I'll just move on. I'll pass it over to Dr. Krebs to speak to the curriculum. Thank you, Aideen. And it's um, great to be here with everyone. If we can have the next slide, I'll um, give you an overview. So the first course that I want to introduce is our Foundations of Biomedical Visualization and Communication, or Seeing, Listening, and Communicating, as we fondly call it. And so this course is a team-taught course with um, faculty from various backgrounds at UBC, ranging from biomedical illustration to journalism to creative writing to um, video production. The focus of this course is to open your ears to listen to stories and then to be able to take those stories and tell them both in a visual and in any other medium that you might choose, ranging from podcasting to writing, um, 
we're really trying to connect you with the stories, with empathy for your target audience. We're going to be looking into the fundamentals of using pictures and words in a biomedical setting. And we have a huge emphasis in this course on including diversity in these uh, pictures and these words, um, in being mindful of your target audience, in doing it in an inclusive, compassionate, and ethical way. So you'll really be learning these skills of uh, being a compassionate and open-hearted communicator. Next one. Parallel to this course is our Managing Creativity course. And this course is um, taught by Patrick Pennefather from UBC Theatre and Film. And um, it builds on um, agile development skills and improvisational skills and a real focus on collaboration and teamwork. Creative collaboration is not something that comes easily to us. We tend to be creative in our own heads, in our own little studio. To manage one's own creativity is already a daunting task. But when you're put into a group setting, you need to learn to manage your own creativity and the creativity of those around you so that you can work effectively as a team. One of these skills that employers are increasingly looking for are really solid team working skills. And this course sets you up with those collaborative skills um, to really function as um, a, a team member who can bring their entire uh, sort of background and creativity to the team while respecting those around you. And of course, the other part of this is that um, you can't just work in isolation, even as a team, you need to work with your target audience, you need to work with the client that you're um, communicating with, and um, those skills are all going to be um, sort of built in this course. Next slide. So after those foundational courses in the first semester, we're going to be going into human structure and function. And so I'll be one of the instructors in this course. My background is as an anatomist. And here we're going to be going through the foundations of human anatomy and physiology. We're going to focus on the skills that you need to understand the basic science. We're going to build on your research skills that we uh, started developing in the first semester. And we're going to be looking um, at, again, using the foundational knowledge about the human body to communicate health stories in a really effective way. We will have virtual um, anatomy labs. We will have team projects throughout the entire term. And all of these projects will go back to the skills that you learned in the first semester. So all of those seeing, listening, and communicating skills, um, you will be given the opportunity to practice managing your own creativity and the creativity of your team. So really applying all of that knowledge in this anatomy and physiology context. Accompanying this um, course, we will have a podcast series that we call Body Banter, where we interview um, wonderful people who deal with the human body in various ways in their professional lives. So ranging from anatomists to anthropologists, to social scientists, to artists. Um, to really look at the human body in its entirety. While we focus in on a single cell, um, we will also sort of zoom out and look at the body um, in, its, in, in a more holistic way, I guess. Uh, next slide, please. B, do you wanna talk about some of these student works? Certainly, thanks, Claudia. Um, my name is B or Bailey, and I'm the program coordinator for the certificate program. And these are some examples of the projects that students made last year in the anatomy course. So um, one of the first big projects in anatomy is a portfolio piece where you choose an organ, a tissue, and really visualize it however you see fit. And this is an example by Rebecca Ellison, who was in our program last year, and she decided to make a um, multimedia kidney project where she um, 
sculpted this kidney out of clay and painted it, but then also used watercolor to demonstrate the histology um, side of that as well. Next slide, please. This is another example of a histology study. Um, and this was done by Milo Ira, who was another student um, of ours last year. And Milo also used, um, I believe it was watercolor to, to make these beautiful um, renditions of histology slides. Next slide, please. And then this is, um, a poster that was made by Livia last year um, and Livia decided to focus on also the kidney but looking instead at the um, the nephron so the functional unit of the kidney and looking at the different cell types and she conceptualized this again in a totally different way um, but using um, a more illustration drawn um, style so these are some examples of projects that you might expect to be making during the anatomy class. Thank you. Back to you, Claudia. Thanks, B. And what always strikes me when I look at our student projects is how they really learned to see and then uh, put what they see and what they want to communicate onto paper in different uh, media. So we showed you some of the more visual media here. We also had students creating podcasts and um, communicating in that way. We had students creating short videos for kindergarten kids to communicate some um, biomedical concepts. So uh, there's a lot of um, open space to uh, sort of discover what you want to do and explore different media that might push you out of your comfort zone. We find a lot of students come in with a really solid background in illustration, which is so wonderful to see. And you could see it in, in that artwork there. And then to see those students explore things that they haven't done before is always um, beautiful because we see how they've, um, they're expanding the spectrum of what they can do and they're engaging with um, biomedical materials and communications in a new way. Okay, now to our third semester, which is our capstone project. This is um, where you will have the opportunity to take everything that you learned in your first two semesters and apply it to a real life project. So you see that triangle in the bottom right corner here of the slide. So it's really that design, art and communication, the technology and the focus on the user experience and user interface, and then your biomedical knowledge that come together in this capstone project. We partner with real life people. So this capstone project is not something that is theoretical with a pretend client, but you will be partnered with a real client with a real need for a biomedical communication. And um, these clients range from nonprofit organizations to this year a textbook publisher. So we have um, the whole gamut of uh, people who are looking for uh, communications in their field. You will be learning to work together as a team here. You'll be working to, uh, you'll be learning how to work with your client and all of that in a, in a safe environment. Every team has a faculty advisor and we have regular meetings to make sure that the project is within scope and on track. If there are any problems and interactions either within the team or with the client or anything, um, faculty is there to mentor you through this process. Um, you will be practicing this effective communication and how to manage a project within a constrained period of time. Throughout this entire semester, we have workshops that are specifically designed to support your projects. We'll have check-ins, we'll have scrums, and we'll have um, sort of, as we go through these rapid prototyping cycles, we'll be able to give you feedback and mentor you on how to present this to your client and how to interact with them. So that's an overview of our curriculum there. And I'll pass it over to B, who's going to be taking you through um, our biomedical ice cream sundae. Thank you, Dr. Krebs. So um, to talk about the career considerations um, for people who are wondering if this program is the right fit for you based on your background and goals, I'm going to walk you through um, an analogy to of how we conceptualize students who enter and then leave the BMBC program. And so we liken every um, entering student as an ice cream sundae. So 
every new student comes with a unique background and a unique set of experiences. And this is your ice cream flavor. Uh, you might have a um, a background in art or design, maybe you focus on computer science and programming, you might be um, have a career already in education and research, or you might even be a practicing healthcare provider. As a program, we, we intentionally select our cohort to be a diverse group of people with unique experiences because we believe that you can learn a lot from each other by collaborating in interdisciplinary teams. So, um, thank you very much. Um, when students enter with their individual ice cream flavors, we then add what we call the BMVC chocolate sauce, which is all of the skills and competencies that you learn in our curriculum that Dr. Krebs just outlined um, in her presentation. So in addition to the biomedical chocolate sauce that everyone gets, um, there is also the opportunity for students to gain additional skills or toppings of their choice. And these are a little bit different depending on what every student wants to get out of this program. So it might be skills like coding or practicing 3D modeling or becoming really proficient at Adobe Illustrator or even audio production. So it's well, while we don't offer full courses specifically in all of these skills because it is a part time online program. We do offer optional skills workshops on Fridays like Aideen was talking about, and we encourage our students to come to as many of those as they can to sort of try out different modalities different techniques that they aren't necessarily familiar with and then practice the skills that they care about the skills they want to build in the assignments or in their own time. So as a result, next slide, please. You'll come out of the program um, as a complete ice cream sundae. And everyone has a different ice cream flavor, different toppings, but everyone will have that same specialty BMVC chocolate sauce. So to break this down a little bit more, I'm gonna talk about the individual categories. So next slide, please. For example, if you're coming into this program with an art, illustration, design, or media background, um, after the BMVC program or with our what we are offering in this program, um, some opportunities for career or employment afterwards might include working with a medical or pharmaceutical advertising agency, working in patient education, in publishing with textbooks, journals, ebooks, and other types of media, or working in a medical animation studio. Next slide, please. So these are some examples of pieces from students um, that kind of fit with this more art illustration design and media background. This is an example of um, an illustration by Linda, who um, was a student last year, and she made a um, poster on the mammary gland and lactation. And this is really for, um, you might see this type of piece in a textbook or in some sort of medical education sphere. Next slide, please. This is an example of work by our student Harpreet. Um, Harpreet taught herself how to do 3D modeling of neurons on the side, which was amazing. And she um, imagined this editorial style piece on um, neurons in multiple sclerosis. Next slide, please. And this is a piece by one of our current students, Harini. Um, this was an exercise of how to um, conceptualize the heart. And Harini um, did a visual of the back posterior side of the heart, which is a rarely seen view in illustrations. Um, and she challenged herself to, to sort of present the heart in a different way here. All right, so if you come to the program with a background in computer science or programming, some um, career or employment opportunities you might expect to see afterwards include working in AR or VR simulation, in health gaming. Um, there's a lot of biomedical tech startups that are, that are happening now, especially here in Vancouver, um, and then also in mobile health applications and software. Next slide, please. Um, so this is an example of um, a mobile or app um, project that is in the biomedical um, field. This is not one of ours, but it is something to, to think about, something that is in the industry now. Next slide, please. 
This is um, the virtual anatomy lab that Dr. Krebs was talking about. We use this um, in BMVC and also in the BC Faculty of Medicine um, to enhance the learning of anatomy for our students. Um, and this has been, this is a collaborative project that was done with the Hive and um, uses 3D photogrammetry and scanning of anatomical specimens. Next slide, please. And this is an example of an interactive online module that our students in a group last year made um, on pulmonary edema. And if you go to the next slide, please, you can see that they, um, they went through the process of creating um, an educational model aimed for medical students um, learning about how to, how to approach a patient care interaction. Next slide, please. All right, so if you are um, coming to us from a background in education or research, um, BNVC can help you to produce effective communication of your own work or your research, as well as collaborate in teams, working with students, um, thinking about who your target audience is and how you want to communicate the ideas that your research is coming up with and the findings that you're having and how to disseminate that to the right people, including investors and also publications. Next slide, please. This is an example of a comic made by our student last year, Olivia. Olivia's background, um, she is currently a PhD student who is studying um, concussion injuries in hockey players. And she realized that comics would be a really great way to communicate the findings of her research and the importance of um, protection and helmets for hockey players instead of writing a dense long paper that maybe hockey players might not want to read. So thinking about who your target audience is and different ways to communicate them and reach them. Next slide, please. This is an example of a set of gifts that Jaden made last year on um, understanding the um, morphology of, of a COVID virus. Um, and so she made this um, an animation, a very short animation of this to educate um, a lay audience. Next up, next, thank you. And this is an example of say a, um, a poster that might be at a conference that you that would, you would use and having a more visually engaging um, presentation in academic spheres. All right, and then to wrap it up, um, if you're coming to us as a practicing healthcare professional, um, some of the opportunities that you might see after BMVC are the ability to have a more effective communication of your own work and research, especially with patients or your colleagues. Um, you may want to um, collaborate on biomedical media design projects and as a subject matter expert, and this program would give you the skills to um, have that language of design and the, the skills to collaborate on creative projects. Um, and then also to that, to that same, um, extent, you could also be a project manager of biomedical media projects. This is an example of a concept design for a prosthesis for a thumb that was um, done by Rebecca um, last year. Rebecca's um, background was in occupational therapy, and so this is what she was interested in um, helping people get back to. Um, after an injury, um, returning to a sense of being able to interact with their environments. And so this was a concept design that she did for a final project in anatomy. Next slide, please. And then this was a group project from last year um, where students were making a, um, a checklist for people living with cystic fibrosis and they reached out to subject matter experts at St. Paul's Hospital and in the clinic that treats adult um, CF patients, they actually um, have started to use this um, checklist for their patients there because they loved what the students made so much. Okay, so um, now that we've talked about sort of career considerations. Um, I want to just do a quick showcase of some of the other student work um, that our past and current students have made. So these are three examples of three totally different approaches to the same assignment. 
So as Dr. Krebs was saying, there's a lot of flexibility in how you approach assignments, how you interpret the discussion and prompts here. And this was a, an assignment in anatomy that was focused on the heart and the significance of the heart and how we bridge the gap between science and culture. Um, and so Cynthia made a poster um, that was connecting the shape of the heart with the shape of the Chinese character for heart. Milo did a piece on, um, it was an editorial style piece about what it means to um, like feel disconnected from your heart. And then Winnie also made a set of gif gifts um, talking about with, a, um, with an hourglass here. Next slide, please. This is an example of um, a patient education comic style piece that Kat made um, about wisdom teeth removal. Next slide. In this piece, Livia taught herself how to do 3D modeling using Maya. Um, and this was something that she was really interested in on doing by herself. And so she decided to tackle this with some support from instructors uh, to model the different formed elements of blood in this poster. And this is an example of another 3D model project by Harini. Um, this year, we were offering um, a series of blender 3D modeling workshops. And this, this is the progression from the very first um, session to what Harini made in the last session of a 3D modeled kidney. And then the last piece I wanna show you is an example of one of the capstone projects the students made. So Linda, Lex, Kat, and Winnie created an anatomy study card game um, for the Faculty of Medicine here at UBC. And it's a real life card game with rules and they did a lot of user experience and um, testing with students to figure out what's the best way to make this fun, but also have a sense of education and they can learn something from it. So this was their final project. Great. And so I will hand this back to Aideen. Thank you, Bailey and Dr. Krebs. So yes, we'll move over to questions and Q and A. Um, and I see some questions have already come in. Thank you. And so I'll call out the question and we'll see who is the best person to answer it. The first question that we have, and I just want to, to um, I should repeat how to, if, for some latecomers uh, to participate in the Q&A, you'll see the QR code, take a photograph with your phone, it'll immediately take you in. Or um, if you're working with a laptop, uh, type slido.com and the event code is BMVC05. If you see a question that you really want to make sure that we answer, you'll see this little thumb over to the right, click on that and that'll push it up. So the first question um, we have is how, how do the most successful students in this program approach it? And is the workload realistically manageable with somebody who's working 40 hours a week? It's a great question. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great question. And with uh, m many successful people around us, I often ask myself, like, how do you do it? Um, I think it's a matter of uh, time management, of making sure you do have the time every week to have, you know, that space of 10 to 15 hours every week to dedicate to this certificate. It might be a, a moment to talk to your employer and say, you know, I'm going to need time for this um, you know there's many ways to approach it um, the in-person classes are four to six pacific time so um, it should be manageable um, if you're on the west coast you might need some accommodations from your employer on the east coast of course it would be in your evenings um, and if you're not doing shift work that should be uh, within a manageable time frame Students do manage. I, we have found that some students do get overwhelmed, um, especially if they have a very demanding job, if there's a transition in the job. I mean, our first cohort was during, in the midst of COVID. So you can imagine people were really, you know, struggling with, we were all struggling with just uh, keeping things together. And we do um, make affordances for that. So we always have an open ear to make sure that you're well supported. Uh, we can give extensions on the ass assignments and make sure that you have access to materials. 
It's yeah, great. Okay. Please, Bill. Yeah, for the first part of that question, how do the most successful students approach it, um, is really with an open mind and with a, a curious mind. So um, we, it's important that everyone attends the classes in person and not just watch the recording afterwards because they're highly um, participatory and they require a lot of discussion, collaborating and listening to ideas as opposed to passively absorbing information. Um, the most successful students also collaborate with their classmates, even outside of, of assigned group projects. So yes, we have lots of structured group activities, but um, the students who reach out to their, their classmates and ask each other for help with, say, this Blender um, program that they're learning that they can't quite figure something out in Illustrator, those ones are the most successful. Um, people who are not afraid to try new software, new techniques, or new skills, even if you're not good at it to begin with, um, they tend to get the most out of the experience with the workshops and trying new things. Um, and then people who ask the instructors for help or ask for feedback and check in and be honest about what, what is going on for them um, tend to get the best support that they need to make it through. We're here to help you succeed. We're not here to you know pump you through on a conveyor belt. We want you to be successful and reach your own goals, um, but we can't do that if you're not open and honest about what's going on for you. Thanks, Thanks Bean. Thank you. I really want to emphasize this aspect of you're not on a conveyor belt, right? We're here really to support you in your unique ice cream, ice cream sundae formation, right? To make sure you get the right amount of sauce and the, the, the sprinkles that you're looking forward to. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and we could encourage the participants here today to come to our next session that will be in August. I'm pretty sure you're going to have some students with you that that these questions can be directed to and ask them how did how how they fit this into into their schedule. Thank you. So um, I'm happy to take this or, or Bailey, if you want to take this, how many students are accepted and how this is compared to application numbers. We're aiming for between 25 and 30 students for the 2023 cohort. Yeah. Um, and then and Aideen, maybe you could speak to the application. Numbers. Sure. Um, you know, we've had two rounds so far, so it's still a relatively new new program. And, um, you know, we see the applications grow over the over the couple of years. So today's where, yes, you're looking between 25 and 30 and we've received somewhere between 35 and 40 applications. In, in the past couple of years. How about uh, the job guarantee after finishing the program? And second fold, do you have a connection to provide jobs or offer students any opportunities to work in the field? I wish we had guarantees, right? It's something we're all looking for in life in general as we're embarking on new things, right? We want that guarantee. There, there's never guarantees in that way, but um, we, do know through our market research that these types of positions are out there. Um, they're very sought after. That's why we put together this certificate because we talk with industry and these skills are very needed. In fact, the government of Canada has identified some of these skills that we teach as something that employers are looking for for in their graduates. So especially when you look at that first semester, the skills of collaboration and communication, of listening, um, those are all skills that we will provide. And then on top of that, we have the biomedical context and all of that. So we know that um, these skills are very much sought after. In our last semester with the Capstone Project, we do work with real life clients. And oftentimes they approach us with a question like, oh, could your students develop a prototype for this one thing? And then they work with the students and they're like, wow, your students are amazing. We, you know, and then they, um, might offer employment. There's no guarantees for that though, right? So I wish I could say we've got a Rolodex of, you know, 50 companies who have openings and they're just waiting for your email addresses as you graduate from this program. No, <laughs> unfortunately not, but we do have a LinkedIn presence and we do, um, you know, cultivate uh, that and, and seek out uh, people. Yeah, and networking is certainly... Yes. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Dr. No, no, it, we do provide the networking opportunity. And we've had one company approach us about our program asking, well, what is it that you do? And we explained they're like, that's great. And then they hired one of our grads. So yeah. Um, yeah. 
yeah yeah the networking is 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 um really um strong in this program and and again take a look at our website we have some student stories there so you can for for our for our participants today you can see their path and their journey through the program um do how much guidance is given if you are not familiar with an aspect of the work example graphic design anatomy others and how much of it is self thought Yeah, we can take too. this one. Sure, I can. I can take this. Um, it's not self-taught. We have synchronous sessions twice a week where we um, have didactic aspects. And even if you are asked to complete a didactic aspect on your own, it is created by us for you um, to make sure that you're guided through it in a very thorough way. So how much guidance are you given as much as you need so the friday workshops for example are really meant to pro to fill that gap that many people have in approaching a new software package in graphic design we've had friday workshops on everything ranging from watercolor technique to a blender workshop right so in terms of the, the visualization space we also ask students to tell us what they're looking for so if we get students saying, we really want some good advice on audio editing for podcasts. We will create a workshop for that. In terms of the anatomy, I know there were some other questions like, do you need a background in biomedical? Do you need a deg an undergrad degree in science in order to get into this program? I don't think that you do. I think you need an open mind to learn. And um, the anatomy can be overwhelming. Um, we're looking at, you know, all aspects of the structure and function of the human body. That's a lot to take in, but um, we can set the goalposts in a in quite an individualized way, really, in terms of the assignments and the deliverables and what we want you to learn. There's no exam about the anatomy at the end because we are not... Um, I'm not as interested for you to know the origin and insertion of individual muscles as to understand conceptually how human gait works or something like that right so we're we're really trying to give you a language and a conceptual overview a scaffolding that you can then use to attach knowledge to for you know many many years to come Bailey did you want to add to that or that no, I think that oh, was perfect. Oh, good. Great. So I see the next two questions are very similar and I can answer them very quickly um, about financial aid and any funding opportunities for the program. Um, there are no, we are not aware of any funding opportunities for this program at this time. Um, are there program start dates in May and September? Again, I can respond to this. The next start date is January 2023. And I expect the next one will be January 2024. We do not have two cohorts running at the same time. Is this the right program for me? Oh, we've got some other questions that have been pushed up. That's fine. Could this certificate program become a master's degree program at some point in UBC? Dr. Krebs. You can read our mind. We're working on that. So yes, we are currently creating um, a master's program in biomedical visualization and communication. We're still in the planning stages. We hope to uh, get it through the committees and the processes over the next 12 to 18 months. Um, it's, it's a bit of a, a long, pro rigorous process as it should be. Um, but yes, we are planning on, on doing that. And um, okay. fill that. I think this certificate really fills a need that is out there that can be sort of um, done in parallel to full time employment and anywhere in the country, whereas a master's program, of course, would be a full time commitment at the UBC Vancouver campus. Mm -hmm. And there's sort of a similar question regarding uh, is it a credit course? And this just to confirm, this is a non credit course. That's right. So it's a non-credit certificate, but many post-secondary institutions have um, previous learning assessment that they will take certificates such as these um, to, um, to look if they meet entrance requirements or course requirements. Right, right. Um, here's a great question about a portfolio. Somebody's looking for some guidance on what would be good to prepare for applying to the program and what should be included inside. 
Yeah, I can take this one. So we don't we do not have a portfolio requirement for the application. The application itself, as I think Aideen's going to talk about a little bit later um, towards the end of this session, um, primarily focuses on a letter of intent, which um, is where you have the opportunity to discuss what your interests are, what your goals are, and why you think this program is a really good fit to help you achieve those goals. Um, we don't require that you you have a visual or creative portfolio. However, um, if you have things that you're working on um, and you want to set up a one on one meeting with me, um, you're welcome to share what you have um, you have already or what you're working on. And then that gives us a better sense of how we can tailor some of the workshops or make sure that we get contacts in, in the instructors to better support you during your time in the program. Thank you, Bailey. Um, another credit course that I, our credit question that we'll just jump over that again is not a, it's a non credit um, program. For the capstone project, do you find our client or do we find it ourselves? And then second uh, can, question on it, can it be local within our own community in another language, for example, French in Quebec? That sounds fascinating. So. Um... For now, we've been finding the clients and we talk with them and the way that we set it up is that we have the clients describe their project and then students bid on the project and say this is my first, second, third choice. These are the roles I'd like to take, you know, in those teams, and then we assemble the teams and pair them with the client. Um, I think we'd be open to a conversation around students bringing a client with them. I think that's an excellent idea in terms of the language. Of course, um, we are trying to um, address as many audiences as possible. And um, I think a project in French shouldn't be a problem at all. The only constraint there is that um, you would have to figure out the language within your team. Your capstone project is not an individual project, it's a team project. And so that will happen in real life as well. So you need to have one or two people who can, um, do the language component and serve as the translator for the team. It's um, it's a great challenge, and I think it would be something really wonderful to explore. So the answer is sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm I'm not sure about the second or this next question. What resources of investigation does the school offer? Do either of you? Should we ask the uh, the questioner to clarify clarify a bit, or do you understand what they may be asking? The, the library resources and software resources and everything. Oh, okay. So we do provide you with access to the Adobe Creative Cloud while you're enrolled in the program. So you'll have access to a full um, software package there for creative, um, well, for, for anything from visualization to audio to film. Uh, so it's all sort of in there. We, you also will have access to the UBC library um, to research um, things and, and to have, you know, get access to textbooks and papers and whatnot. We'll also, in our uh, foundations course, there's one session led by a librarian to talk about research skills and um, science literacy in that way. So um, I, if that's what you were asking, that's the answer. That <laughs> sounds like a, yeah, that sounds like it. I'll take the next question is regarding the cost of the program. So um, the the, the fee for this program is 11,500 and it is payable in three installments. Um, but I'll just I'll re, um, go back. There is a, an application fee of $175. And again, the program fee is um, 11,500. The three installments is once you have been accepted, there is a, we ask for a deposit of $1,000. And then uh, the first installment, of 5,275 is due just before first class, um, first course, which will be, and we'll probably collect in December 2022 before your January 2023 um, program um, kicks off. And then the second installment, again, 5,275 will be collected just before the second uh, term starts. Um, Bailey, do you want to speak to how projects are graded or assessed? Sure. So because there's so many directions that students can go in with the way they interpret the prompts for the assignments, um, as you saw with that three different 
heart interpretations of that assignment. Um, we don't use a like a percentage or um, sort of marking system. We instead um, want to make sure that everything is complete um, and then also give you feedback on um, what you turn in and acknowledge that what you turn in could still be developed further. It is a prototype and you could revisit it um, in the future. So we give quite detailed feedback about um, your target audience, your design choices, um, things that you maybe didn't consider the first pass and then give you support to revisit them to include in your portfolio for later. Yeah, thanks, B. I really want to emphasize this. We do ask that people, of course, complete the assignment so that they can graduate from the certificate, but they're not graded in that way. They, there's no, you know, you got 95 on this assignment. It's all um, really tailored feedback to your needs and to your individual journey. Um, it's meant to support you in your development. That's great. Thank you. We have somebody from outside of BC, BC asking if there are any specific considerations uh, that they could be considering if they're um, joining from another province. Just the time difference, right? So you will have yeah. to make sure that it fits into your adjusted time schedule. We did have, we this year as well, we have people from across Canada. Last year we had people from across Canada and uh, the United States um, and it works out really well. Um, and when we make the groups, um, we often ask what time zone you're in for that period of time so that we can get the groups within the same time zone. We do try to accommodate for that. Um, it doesn't always work, but um, that way it's easier for people to get together. That's the final project you're talking about there. Yeah, the final yeah. Project, yeah. even projects along the way, people might yeah. be like, oh, we're both oh. in Toronto and we want to talk to this specialist at this clinic. Can we work oh. together? That's perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, is, uh, is there any statistic that shows how many of the students get attracted to the market or firms? I think we're too young. We only have one cohort of graduates. And um, when we've talked to them, they are making their journey um, that they were hoping for. So uh, we've had some people really picked up in sort of the career slot that they they were aiming for. Um, others have applied to the master's program in Toronto and have been accepted there. So we've others have gone into a health professional program. So we've really, um, I think, accompanied people uh, for a year towards very diverse outcomes. But we don't have numbers yet. We only have one yeah. graduate so far. Yeah. We have um, somebody who, who's interested in medical writing. Will it focus on medical advertising regulations or is it more design focused? That's an interesting question. Um, we don't go into medical advertising regulations, but this sounds like a fantastic topic for a workshop that we would bring experts in to talk about that. Medical writing is definitely something that would go under the communications umbrella and we in fact work with people from journalism and creative writing. Um, so this would just be the focus then. And when there's an assignment, that would be the medium that you might want to focus on and explore more. We would always encourage you to also take up um, a pen or you know, your, your mouse to create something visually in a different way, um, just to, to broaden your, uh, your skills. But um, this would definitely work for that as well. Again, with the knowledge that this is um, a program that is built on collaboration skills and communication skills and very team oriented. Mm -hmm. And I'm just mindful of time. I see there's still a lot of questions. So I'd encourage you, to, uh, our, our participants today, if you see a question you really, really want answered, just click on that little thumb on the far right to make sure that we, we answer it. So we have somebody here with a graphic design background who's asking if they should be um, studying some biology before they, they join the program. So we don't have any prerequisites um, for admission. Um, as we mentioned before, it's, it's we're more interested in you having an open mind um, to approaching new ideas. We do have some students who 
they they come from a graphic design background they studied at emily carr um and they haven't taken biology since grade 12 and they are doing just fine in our our program this year that's great somebody's making a great comment about we've become slaves of powerpoint in the program do you cover other software example keynotes or means of communicating science for example ted talk style that's the program Right. So, um, yes, we are also sick of PowerPoint karaoke, right, where we just look at the slides and read it, read off the slides and move on. Um, <laughs> having done that for an hour now, it seems like a weird comment, but, um, you know, different media work well in different settings. So this is exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people to move away from PowerPoint presentations. And if they do need to have PowerPoint presentations, how to make those effective and compelling for the message that they're trying to convey. Um, we've talked a lot about, I mean, coming out of the COVID pandemic, we have seen a lot of PowerPoint presentations by health officials and government officials trying to explain things with varying impact and results. And so this is the gap that we're going to try to fill that you will be filling as graduates of this program to help um, communicate things differently, better. Um, TED Talk style with um, the, the next question, complex data visualization techniques and software. That's what we're trying to get you ready for. Yeah, super. And I saw a question down below about um, opportunities career-wise I encourage that person perhaps that person arrived late I encourage you to take a look at the at the recording because uh, Bailey really covered very well what those opportunities could be um yeah um is the class recorded yes the class is recorded um but as Bailey suggested we really really encourage you to attend the classes um, here's a really good question. How accessible is this for someone with hidden, invisible, non-apparent neuro disabilities? We will accommodate you, of course, right? So you need to let us know what your needs are, um, and we will work with you to make this um, accessible and successful for you. We've had students in the past who've approached us with varying um, requests for accommodations or just, you know, saying, hey, I, I need a heads up on this or this mirror board that you use is confusing. Can we come? And of course, that's um, we have such an emphasis on equity, diversity, inclusion for everyone in the communications that we want our graduates to be able to produce um, would be very hypocritical of us to not do the same in our classroom. Um, and of course we do. Um, this is one of our core values. It's one of UBC's core values and um, we just need to know about it. Bay, do you want to add to that? No, I think that that covered it. Okay. Um, we are using Canvas to answer that question quickly. Again, the job prospects. I don't know if you want to add anything, Bailey, that you've already you've already said, or Dr. Krebs. Um, no, yeah. Again, if it's somebody who arrived late, take a look at the recording. Um, I mean, certainly you didn't go into salaries or or um, or, but but I would encourage that person to contact you, possibly one on one, Bailey, for for a discussion. Yeah. Um, somebody's asking if they should have a. A bachelor degree in biomedical visualization to work or or we can we just have the certificate instead i guess it's a it's a it's a case of their background plus the certificate again potentially contact us for a direct one-on-one -on -one with Bailey to discuss that probably would be the best way to deal to deal with that um would creating a powtoon i don't know how to pronounce that educational video count as a project Sure, and we've had students do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there any opportunity to learn those additional skills that you talk about within the program at UBC as electives? So uh, are there any? So the additional skills that we offer are primarily in an optional workshop format, um, and they are only offered to the BMVC students um, on Fridays. So they are not currently offered as electives to a wider um, population at, at UBC. Um, but we do, um, if there are community events, so say the, um, I think it was the 
UBC UX user experience club was putting on a workshop. Um, we try and stay connected with what's going on on campus for any free events that are happening and try and um, promote those to our students as other options for them to be gaining additional skills. Okay. Thank you. I'm mindful of time. We're one minute left to, to closing. And I do want to sort of close with them um, with some a couple of final slides. Just one question I do want to to the program fees are the same for international and domestic students. Um, and I would I would can't I again encourage anybody who wants to discuss their suitability for the program to contact us directly for a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with our program coordinator. So I'll just move back to our PowerPoint slide. Um, so our application is open today. So you can go online and you'll see a big apply button. And uh, we have a deadline of August the 31st this year, obviously. Before you apply, we do encourage you to read our handbook and to really understand what our, what our policies are. The requirements are a minimum two years post-secondary. Really what the team is looking for is a motivation uh, to complete this program. That letter of intent is really important. The process again is following the application fee and completing the application, which includes a letter of uh, intent. We also look for a copy of your diploma degree or certificate. Um, to, so it's a pretty, pretty straightforward, simple um, application process, gathering some information for yourself, um, your educational, professional background, and then uh, really important is that letter of intent. Why do you want to take the program and what your expectations of the program are for you? The fees are 11,550 payable in three installments. Again, once you get accepted, to hold your seat, we look for a $1,000 deposit. And then prior to the starting of the first term, we look for 5,250 or 275. And then the, the balance will be just prior to the start of, um, of term two. And financial aid is not available for this program. And I think that has covered everything today. Thank you so much um, for to Dr. Krebs and um, Bailey for joining me today to speak about the program. I hope it was very helpful for our participants. Thank you to my colleague Olga for helping me in the background when my mouse decided not to work. Thank you. And then finally to all our participants today, thank you so much for being here. And again, we encourage you if you want to find out more about this, because it is such an interesting program. If you want to know if you if this program is right for you, do contact us for that one on one interview. Uh, in the meantime, take care, everybody, and be safe and hope to see you soon. Bye bye.